Um, our two holdovers from last year, obviously the nursing home, uh, the secondary issue is the county building. And uh, one of the ones that is really uh, more uh, elusive or that just came up into the public light is the budget issue. And uh, we'll get into that uh, depending on what you want to talk about with it. But, uh, you know, we are, uh, and I have documents, I, I, I was telling Chris and Barry, uh, the latest letters uh, I've sent out to um, the legislature on the status of the budget, the gap. I said it was about $60 million during my state of the county. Uh, where it stands today is about $57 million. And, uh, you know, we could talk about that if you want to start that, what the gap is. Basically, what we're looking at right now, just to uh, look at the 2015 budget, which we're putting in place right now, it's looking if we had to have the same budget as we have today, next year, we got a $57 million gap. Uh, we believe we can close that, and I'll tell you uh, uh, how I would do that. And it's a critical issue because we're, we're, I was authorized by the leaders of both parties, Democrat and Republican, Jeff Berkman and uh, Steve Russia, to start doing aggressive moves, which include laying off hundreds of workers. And, uh, you know, uh, we were going to meet and have a follow-up discussion on that in the next few days, but I, I believe that their instructions to me, because I need the authorization of the legislature, is to start laying off people August 1st. And, and Can I ask one question for yeah. The $57 million, you know, it seemed to come out of nowhere. Yeah. Is that trying to recoup the 40 million ad drew down from the reserves no it's so just, it's just a, yeah we'll, we, we will still short 57 million. yeah we will be in a very weakened condition no matter what happens so i'll give you an example for the last three three years or so we've been using about 40 million dollars from surplus every year to balance the budget rather than raise taxes or make cuts that's the options they had so what they uh the legislature and the county executive did was raid those funds so now we expect to get 20 million 21 million dollars back if it, today that we, we stand in um, revenues, uh, we should not use uh, that entire amount of money. It would be ludicrous. So I'm saying we use 10 million of it. Now, the other option of this money is the sales tax. They overestimated sales tax uh, to a number that is really un uh, inconceivable. And where we are looking at today, we think we're going to have a gap in the sales tax between two and seven million dollars. So that $21 million I told you we're going to get in, in, in the revenues, we're going to have to probably use part of that to augment just to get through this budget. So what I'm saying, at the end of this year, I think we have some one-shots that we can use. So let's just go back to the $60 million, 57, but let's round it off to 60. I believe I can get $10 million from uh, not uh, filling those fun unfunded positions. So they're funded but not filled. So that's off the, those are off the table, those 200 positions. So that's $10 million off that $60 million price tag. Those are just dark positions? Yes. Okay. Then there's another $10 million that we can use in further one-shots, uh, raid some other accounts that we've had that aren't really being utilized now, but we kept them to keep the uh, budget strong. So now you're down to about $40 million gap. And uh, we, we have been making some progress. We created a CERT team. It's a contract evaluation review team. Uh, and we have renegotiated successfully 62 contracts. I don't have the dollar amount of what it mean, what it was, you know, 10,000 10, or a million, um, but I can put that together. It's an ongoing thing. Every week we're either canceling or renegotiating a lot of contracts. Uh, so it leaves us, I believe, at the end of the year with about a $30 million uh, gap. And that, and if you look at the funded positions, I said 200 positions equals $10 million. That's where we're getting this basis of really 600 positions or further cuts. And further cuts could mean uh, more contract cancellations. We do have a lot of contracts. Uh, we also have to look at where we take that money from. So for example, a, an assistant district attorney is funded 100% by Orange County tax, property taxpayers. The uh, DSS worker, on the other hand, are, are funded 75 to 76% by outside agencies. So. You, you, you would, four DSS workers arguably equals one uh, ADA, and that's the difficult decision we have. Uh, we're, we'll hit Valley View later on. Uh, we believe it's upwards of 12 million it costs us a year, but let's say, you know, I heard Mike Sussman say it was 5 million uh, a year today. He said it was 5 million what it costs us. That's still about 100 employees that we'd have to uh, find. I mean, this is a real situation uh, at the end of this uh, budget crisis. You're going to see, I think, an ugly fall. It's going to be a rough fall. 
I don't intend to go uh, <laughs> above the tax cap with the budget. Uh, the legislative leadership has instructed me not to as well. So at the end of the day, when I submit my budget in September, uh, October, in that realm, uh, we are going to really be discussing um, some serious implications to the workforce of Orange County. And I am very concerned as a county executive uh, uh, in, in something that's very important to me. Uh, for example, like a DSS worker, uh, one of the other employees, Harry Poor, who's our operations, we spent about two hours at DSS a few weeks ago. And we have ladies there that are in charge of family health, They're taking care of young kids, making sure like, if they're from a broken home, let's say in one of the cities or somewhere in the, in the county, if I have to lay off some of those people, which I think you're going to see across the board layoffs, that workload for the remaining individuals is going to increase and go higher. So we can have a significant impact on the public. I believe we will. Not, not could. I think we will. So you might have, like, you know, a, a child that is in a questionable circumstance how, now seeing a delay in service because of the deep cuts that we're going to have to make. And, and, and we have some difficult decisions on where we're going to pinpoint cuts. So how many cuts are we looking at starting August 1st? Uh, August 1st, I believe it's going to be between 50 and 100. That's the number that's been thrown out from the legislature to me. What's the, this is a $57 million gap on a what? What's the total budget you're looking at there? 762 is the annual budget for the county. $114 million comes from property tax owners. $201 million comes from sales tax. And the sales tax numbers for this year were inflated. So. It would be a blessing if I could use 201 for next year, but if I was responsible, I should probably use like 196 or something like that. If you look historically at the sales tax numbers that have come in, I, I forgot what the number is, but they they increased it so much this year that it was just an unpalatable number. And I personally believe it was done to get through last year's budget in the election year. I mean, that, that's just the way it is. You sound, and, you sound like a cynical reporter. I know. <laughs> But if you look, if you look at, uh, and I don't know if Chris was at the meeting, uh, uh, but but if you look at the, the a lot of the towns and villages and ma and mayors have been freaking out the last couple months, because the county recommends. So when I was a supervisor in Chester, last year they said things are going great. We anticipate this much money in sales tax. So some supervisors say, okay, I'll put in what you tell me is the anticipated re revenue for next year. It helps them as well when your budget balance budget. A lot of supers, like supervisors like myself, Dan DePew, um, Bob Jankowski from, um, from uh, Hamptonburg, we put in a lower amount because that is that fund balance or rejuvenator, so to say. So let's say if, if Barry is the county and says, Steve, you got a million dollars coming for Chester, I'll put in 800000 And then when that a million comes in, that, that 200000 might seem a small amount of money for a town. It's not. Is money that that is just basically found money, so to say. You budget for the worst, and then you, you have some surplus at the end. So now you have towns and villages in Orange County, which I don't know if it's on the radar or not, that are complaining, saying, "Hey, the county told me last year I was getting a million bucks. I'm I'm going to get eight hundred thousand dollars, and that's what I'm budgeting on." So it is what it is. Um, but that this is the implications on the county budget as well. Of that fifty to a hundred, what department do you see having the greatest impact in terms of job loss? Um, I don't know at this point, Barry. I'm, I'm, I'm giving the bad news to my employee, to the department heads uh, today at, at, at 4.30. I'm having a special uh, department head meeting with them to tell them that, uh, you know, some of the things I'm doing, like you, we've canceled the bonuses that the, that the Diana administration had promised, the uh, merit bonuses. Can't give uh, department heads a bonus a month later, lay off some of them and regular workers. Mm -hmm. Just not the message you want to send out. Uh, so... I, I, Barry, I, I, that's that's my that's the big question that I ra I rack with my internal staff. Like today, my guys, like you know, we, the biggest the biggest department is DSS, but like I said, seventy five percent of it's funded by the federal and state government. You know, the, we're only putting a small part of it, and at the end of the day, what is the impact going to be on the street? Are these layoffs being done in response to the the court decision on Valley? I think it's both. It, it has to happen one way or another, and uh, it's just been kicking the can over the years, and the sooner we start addressing it, the sooner we'll be out of it. So regardless so of that... This would have happened anyway. anyway yeah. Without Valley View, uh, Valley View is not the silver bullet to save Orange County. Just like the casinos in Orange County wouldn't be the silver bullet to get us out of it. It's a, it's a, it's a culmination of a number of things that would really uh, have to come together, but the most important thing is budget responsi responsibility. You have to have a balanced budget. 
and well, we, we don't we have that. He overestimated for for Death sales tax. purposes. How much more did, was he estimating in this budget for for sales tax than he did in the previous year? I believe it was ten percent. Ten percent higher. Yes. Okay. The number that we're going to be short this year is between two and seven percent, seven million right now. Okay. If the present trend continues, we'd yeah. be short seven million dollars based on the, the first quarter's completion. So, how mm -hmm. much is the total that he puts in the budget? Two hundred and one this year. I think it was 190 something last year. Yeah, so it went up well, a significant amount. Okay. And he bumped it up, then the legislature bumped it up some more. So sales taxes are up, yeah. they're just not as high as he was in. Exactly. Okay. So if you go to Woodbury Commons, which we spent some time with them because they're doing a big uh, addition over there, <coughs> they're on par, those stores, with their sales projections. Uh, we just left, the district attorney and I uh, left a union, um, uh, union and non union uh, press conference where we talked about enforcing workman's comp, all these different things that might have been not sexy things to do in the past that we're going to start enforcing them now, go to construction sites, making sure people are obeying by the laws. Uh, the Carpenters Union, uh, they're in a 90%. Iron Workers, 100% of our local Iron Workers Union employed. So, uh, and, and we went across the table. A lot of these people are, are working right now. It's been their best year, according to a conversation an hour ago, than uh, since 2008. So, and that's not even including the tap and Z or the casino, uh, which are both going to be union jobs wherever they go. When did the legislature recommend 50 to 100 layoffs? We've been talking about it. Uh, we've been trying to have regular conversations, the leadership, uh, namely Steve Brusha and Berkman, but we also include Mike Amo and Melissa Bonasek. But for the most part, uh, we, we met before the decision came out on Tuesday, uh, Jeff Berkman and... Uh, and Mike, uh, was it Monday or Tuesday, it was Steve Brescia and Jeff Berkman and I, and we talked about it. We knew this gap was coming in the budget, and we, we also talked about the county building, the government center. Uh, so regardless of the, those two issues, we were still going to be in a deep uh, hole to get through this budget year. So uh, they both, uh, along with myself, said we need to start taking aggressive action. So they agreed that eight, uh, 50 to 100 layoffs yeah. were necessary? And we believe, if you look at that $30 million gap, if we can't get that down, that's 600 jobs, roughly. I know, I know Wayne's new, Langdon's new, Harry Ford's new, you're new. Yeah. How about the people to put together these numbers that you're now having to struggle through? Any they, as well as majority of the elected officials, meaning the legislators, said they knew this was coming. Okay. And that it was a way to get up. I was flat out, I won't tell you which legislators told me, but the people that, that really run the organizations told me you would do the same thing if you were up for election then. Right, you got three years, right? And, and the bottom line, regardless of what I say, Moody's backed it up. And that's why if we got into the casino conversation, we were downgraded. We're just a, one notch above Sullivan and Ulster County now. The difference is Ulster County has a stable outlook. Uh, Sullivan County has no outlook. We're one notch above them with a negative outlook, and the way to get out of that negative outlook was to, we, we anticipated on bonding for the government center, fixing that BB plus in June this month is when we're recalibrated by Moody's. Who knows what's going to happen to us now? Because not only is the government center stalled, so we're not going to be bonding this month, but the LDC, which was mentioned in the Moody's, not the LDC part, but Valley View itself, the continuing... Um, addiction of Orange County to use fund balance to balance a budget and subsidize the nursing home, which was it says is going to continue in the near future, uh, contributed to the negative outlook. So if you were a bond rating agency right now and you looked at Orange County right now, uh, there's some signs of positive examples, new contract renegotiations, uh, also union, I'm talking to contract <laughs> with outside contractors, those renegotiations are strong and they're going in the right direction. Our union contracts are moving along. Our second largest union, I believe, will be settled in the next few weeks, uh, which is a corrections contract. That's a small glimmer of hope, but if you're a rating agency, you say, county building's still not built in three years. You're leasing all over the place. Uh, you're using fund balance to balance the budget. Your sales tax is over, uh, overestimated. It's not a good position right now for somebody to do a rate evaluation. Why did Moody's give give it such a good rating just a year ago then. They did, but they give ne they gave negative outlooks on it. Yeah. Because we still were strong. We still had uh, a strong surplus because mm -hmm. it kept uh, going back. Right. But now it's down to where you really cut down everything down to the bone and there's no replenishing at this point. 
in what a near you, site. Where do you see the surplus coming in at the end of this year? Twenty one million. Twenty one million. Okay. Which part of I believe will be used to augment that two to seven million dollar gap to sales tax well. Okay. So uh, it's it's not a good situation. Do I see a light at the end of the tunnel? Without a doubt. I believe that we have a very good chance of getting one casino. That's one uh, uh, big shot, as you see, in cash revenue. If we don't get a casino, uh, we will get, uh, I believe, $4 million for each casino in Sullivan. I don't think Ulster has a strong uh, argument as, as Sullivan does. At the end of the day, it could be anybody could get one. Uh, so that's one thing. I see economic development. We have a very strong outlook with that. We, uh, my office is now right across the hall from the partnership. So we are literally in the partnership's office, or they are in my office, seven times a day. I spent the evening with Bill Fioravanti, their new director. Uh, we mm -hmm. hit uh, meetings uh, all over the county, including Caesars and, and uh, Green Track. Had two events last night that we attended, mm -hmm. public forums for them. So we are, uh, instead of having the former, like Jimmy O'Donnell, the deputy county executive, was the face of economic development for Orange County, the face of Orange County economic development is me. Every company that comes in from Amy's to Kicker Frosh, uh, I meet with them face to face on the initial meeting, uh, and it's just showing that we have a cooperative agreement. You have the IDA on one side of me, the partnership on the other side, so it's basically one stop shopping. So you don't have to ask what your possible breaks are, what your incentives are here, uh, the the approval, uh, how long it takes, what the resources are available, sewer water. The partnership and myself can ask what uh, the available portfolio of, of properties with the required square footage of the applicant, uh, you know, we answered all one shot. So the meeting went okay today with Amy's? Very good, okay. yeah. Of sparse uh, attendance, so which is, uh, which is good. Can the Valley View LDC proceed with its work? Yes, I believe so. They continue to exist as a legal entity. The court? ruling invalidating the court ruling invalidated the the transfer of the facility based on the number of votes that were there but that it didn't disqualify them when you form an LDC you filed certain documents up in the Secretary of State's office that's not invalidated so the entity still exists okay what can it do well they can continue to receive RFPs they can continue to receive the information that comes in no they're not going to be a transfer and there wasn't guaranteed to be a transfer in the first place Lewis County for example they didn't transfer theirs Albany County formed an LDC they're doing something completely different. So they can continue to operate. There's, there's ultimately not going to be a transfer at this point, though. And the LDC was a two-pronged thing. Most people thought it was to privatize, which that was a history in the state, but the other was to get incentives. We pay 27% more than any other facility in Orange County, and we're ranked in the bottom 5% uh, of facilities. Uh, I'll give you all those stats. About, bottom 50%. Bottom, bottom 5%, yeah. Got it out of 10 facilities, so bottom 50%. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's the argument out there, and we've, you know, it's the last issue I would have liked to jump into that right off the bat. I thought BB Plus was done, the, the county, the government center, we can hit that in, in, in a couple of minutes as well. But uh, the Valley View issue uh, is going to obviously go to appeals. Uh, we decided that instantaneously talking to the legislative leadership, um, and it's going to be an issue in the fall still. Uh, so it, it is what it is. We, we, the, the big problem on our side is the cost of labor there. And uh, I believe that we have not had, it, it's the same history that Chris has been writing about for three years. Every time you get close to selling it or Eddie closing it, they come in with a sweetheart deal, never ratified by their membership, never. Most of their membership tells us in the other units says they'll never pass it. And then uh, it gets saved and they walk away and nothing gets done. Meanwhile, we are negotiating every other contract with the other remaining five unions in the county right now aggressively. So have you personally went to them, or we have and said we need X out of the out of the cost? We have. Or do you choose a number, or do you just? We yeah. have we have come and sat down with them, talked about the different costs, and you know, frankly, uh, members of the leadership have said that what we we're not we can't take a, a pay cut, and that's the that's the problem here. And and one thing that I know these guys don't want me to talk about, but you guys wrote an article two months ago about a person accused of selling uh, heroin on a controlled. And, and, and some other uh, prescription drugs illegally. Do you know where that individual is today? The employee of Valley View. She's working at Valley View. That's the difference between the public sector and the private sector. So where your mom might be at XYZ uh, nursing home, if somebody was accused of doing something illegal there, you would think, you would hope that they'd be out of there that day. 
I mean, this is the restrictions that we're under there. And, and it's not that we have a higher uh, ratio of nurses or caregivers to patients there. It's because our contract's so lucrative. The amount of vacation and sick days, it's just making it um, unsustainable. So we're hoping that either we get some kind of major compromise, which I don't see. We're going into, uh, we're, we're going into where we're going to have to have a, a mediator is going to have to take us, shepherd us through this process. And it's just unfortunate. That's what happened up at Golden Hill, right? The, the new owner is paying what? A, cord, a third, a half in labor costs? I don't know what they're paying. I don't yeah. know what is the percentage. I know, I know they're paying less in labor costs. Right. Um, according to the patients, so the quality care is up. Right. And that's the, the two people, the two priorities should be number one taxpayers. The patients taken care of there will always be taken care of. They will not be thrown out in the street. We have people calling us the day after the LDC vote, pick up your... Am I supposed to pick up my father because they're disconnecting him off of the machines at, at, at Valley View? That's disingenuous. You said you have that four. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so what, and pardon me if I get the numbers wrong, because when Ed came in here and throughout the whole process on it, choose a number, we were told what it was costing the county to run Valley View. Yeah. What does it cost? $12 million a year. All right, so if, you, if you're successful on the appeal and you sell it for $18 million, you've still got to go forward every year by the With some legacy costs, yep. So what happens to the excess money? I would, if it was me today and you said, Steve, you're going to get $20 million for the county for Valley View, I would put $10 million towards the budget, and I would put $10 million towards the legacy cost fund to cover the, the long term. Okay. Um, Before we leave the overview, just, do you have a, a sense of what the casino will mean annually? Yes. What you're looking at? And I, I casino and, and Woodbury Commons yeah. increase. Those are, those are the two almost predictable yeah. increases, right? Wood, Woodbury Commons is, is a overhaul of about $170 million. Uh, every brick will be replaced there. It'll be, I think, a small amount of square footage that's added. I forgot mm -hmm. what the numbers offhand, 80 or 100,000 square foot. Not, nothing exorbitant like the existing facility. Um, but what will I, that extra bring in, do you think? The extra will ha will have a pilot, right. as last fall was agreed right. upon. I don't know offhand what that will bring, but I do know the casinos. We had a report done for Saratoga, which is in the town of Newburgh. Uh, the property taxes on it would be $19 million, mm -hmm. 13 of which would go towards the school district, Newburgh School District. The remaining would be split between the town and the county. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we would get an estimated gaming fee of ten million dollars on a minimum of what they're saying annually. Uh, yes annually to each town so the town of Newburgh and, and Orange County should see at least I would budget 13 million or lower to be conservative the extra fluff money that comes in so to say would be used to to replenish the fund balance or deal with any other shortcomings so I would assume right off the bat we would see the you know 12 10 12 to 13 million every year uh, annually from a casino so we're let's not, say we're not putting because of the, the never can't and we yeah. wouldn't see that for two years that's yeah. why i see the the light at the end of the tunnel wouldn't be really shining on us physically for another two years just to clear on the on the, on the job so august somewhere between 50 and 100 and what's the worst case scenario in terms of the number 600 600 jobs yeah. possibly by the end of the year yeah and the math speaks for itself, Barry. You're up against the tax cap, so you can't turn around and, and go against the tax cap. So how do you cut expenses? Yeah. Um, well, you can go over the tax cap. Yeah. You can, but you, you can't can go over the tax cap. Yeah. I, I guess yeah. you, you can go over the tax cap, but you've got to have the votes to do that, and I don't see the evidence yeah. there. When, when legislative leaders of both parties have said they're not doing it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you think what's they would rather lay off 600 yeah. people than raise taxes? It's crazy. They, they've said they're not going over the tax cap, and, and quite frankly, I don't think the executive has any plans to go over the tax cap either. You've got to keep looking for alternatives. We have done one thing. If you look at Orange County compared to the other counties around the state, since 2008, everybody else cut back their governments, shut down different things, and did the, uh, adjusted <coughs> in relation to the recession. We've pretty much stayed intact. You transferred some people from one wing from the Perry Building, and we've increased on stuff because... We were still doing pretty heavy, and we had very solid. The county was doing so well seven, eight years ago that they were creating funds to put money into. Real, honestly, they were putting, <laughs> there was really funds that were all over the place, open space funds, this, that, the other thing, that you didn't have to do. It wasn't a required government service, but you had so much money coming in that you, uh, they created a lot of these funds. They've now been depleted. These are those infamous one-shots that we refer to as well as uh, you know, the workman's comp fund, things that we do need that have also been rated. At what point did you realize that the budget was in this 
bad a shape. You know, and I knew, I, I read the newspapers and I read the, the puff speeches that everything was great, our bond reading was good, like Ken saying, look, everybody says it's good. They say negative outlook, but negative outlook seems that you could do a couple of things and you can change the direction of ship. In, February, in, in December, the financial advisor for Chester, who was a good friend of mine, and, he, and talked to Moody's, and Moody said that we were doomed financially. Everything, the wheels were falling off the bus, and that was in December, and they said you can't anticipate, and this is right after you saw a bond reduction in Dutchess County, and I think another county, it might have been Westchester. Uh, so they, uh, that's when I realized that we were really in bad shape. We didn't have the most stellar transition, and we do have a lot of new people. So, uh, you know, it took two months to get furniture delivered to our office. We had some borrowed furniture here and there and things and that weren't 100%. Um, but uh, it's not very hard to get the financial budgets that are filed in Albany and start dissecting them right off the bat. And the numbers really can't lie. Aside from value in the government center, which I almost take on a life of my own, <laughs> yeah. look, looking back, can you see what the county should have done? They should have cut some programs well, or raised taxes. Get, they, okay. they, nobody has the guts to raise taxes. Right. I've done it in Chester when I had to. Mm -hmm. I'm not want to be, you know, uh, you, you don't have to go above the uh, rate of inflation. I, my rule is always trying to keep the taxes below the rate of inflation. And when I left the town of Chester, People were paying less than what, or, or about the same when I started there over a six year period. But that was from aggressively renegotiating contracts. I mean, this, the garbage contract in Chester alone, I think, was probably 25% of the reason why I'm sitting here as a county executive. 